Hello and welcome to People and Profit. This week we're at the OECD to meet the co-founder of one of the best known websites in the world. Every two minutes, 400 guests check into a property on Airbnb. They have the choice of over 4 million of them around the world. But the site has fallen foul of some city authorities due to its rapid expansion as they struggle to cope with the rise in short-term rentals. To discuss this and more, I'm joined by the co-founder of Airbnb, Nathan Bracharzak, Chief Strategy Officer as well, I should say. Thank you for speaking to us. Thanks for having me. Um, you've published a report on sustainability and tourism and the effect that Airbnb has. What have you found? Uh, two major findings. One is that uh, Airbnbs are distributed fairly evenly throughout a city, and so uh, we're actually bringing travelers outside of the typical tourist hotspots that are suffering from over-tourism and actually out into the surrounding neighborhoods. And so Airbnb is a means for distributing and scaling tourism over a broader surface area. That's actually really good for cities. And, and with that tourism comes a lot of spending, and the money is being spent at local businesses in these uh, neighborhoods, uh, which is very good for the economy. It's not all being concentrated in one place. So that's one major finding of the report. The second is we just trace um, the flow of a euro spent on Airbnb versus that of the hotel industry or cruise ship industry. And what we find uh, on Airbnb is the host sets the price. They get to keep 97% of whatever they charge. And so you know, almost all the money goes right into their pocket for them to then spend on their home, uh, on their vacation, uh, on their education, whatever it may be, which is very different than if you look at the hotel industry, where uh, much of the money or the profits flow out of the local economy uh, and, and often out of the country. There have been some high profile disputes with city authorities, particularly here in Europe, uh, cities banning various forms of Airbnb, not allowing full apartments to be rented in some cities, etc. Were you surprised at the pushback from authorities? Did you think that this was going to come with a model like Airbnb, which was so different to what we had before? Well, it's a, it's a obviously new model, uh, not contemplated by laws that uh, were put into place 30 or 40 years ago. Um, and so, you know, there needs to be uh, adaptation regulatory-wise. The question is, what's the right path forward? You know, generally speaking, we've uh, had a very uh, productive and proactive conversation with cities. Uh, we've reached agreements with more than 400 uh, municipalities around the world uh, dealing with, uh, you know, how to regulate this activity. Um, and so I think there are a lot of success stories. Uh, we also have tax agreements uh, where we're basically treating Airbnb like hotels and, and collecting uh, the transient occupancy tax, the hotel tax. And to date, we've collected and remitted over 400, uh, over $500 million uh, in, in hotel tax that otherwise, without a technology platform like Airbnb, would be impossible for local authorities to collect. And so you know, I think that's another way in which we're productively working with cities. How do you respond to criticisms that Airbnb is responsible for depopulating parts of cities? I know it's an issue here in Paris. It's been said also in Berlin and in Barcelona, too. Well, I think a lot of these headlines that you read are very sensational. And there's also a lot of antagonism between Airbnb and kind of the hotel industry. Uh, and so that's what leads to a lot of the sensational headlines. Uh, you know, that being said, we're willing to partner with cities to address their concerns. And so um, in places like Barcelona, uh, where there's been concerns about over-tourism in the old part of town, you know, we've worked together to uh, remove listings from the site and, and really put a lot of rules into place. Um, and so I, I do think there's a, a productive path forward here. Um, but, uh, you know, the path isn't always, uh, sometimes it takes a while to realize what the right path is. How does that dialogue go when you encounter a problem like that with cities? Well, I think the first thing is getting sh straight on the facts, right? And, and, and uh, you, often there's a lot of misinformation uh, floating around out there. Um, and so, you know, we have a lot of data, we share the data, um, and then we point to what we've done elsewhere, which uh, you've seen a variety of different mechanisms put into place in other cities and countries, everything from uh, registration systems, uh, where the host has to voluntarily do it. There's uh, involuntary registration systems, where, where Airbnb actually automatically registers you when you become a host. Um, there's places where we actually enforce uh, the uh, the rules ourselves. Um, so we say uh, to the city, or the city asks us, the city says, we're not well equipped to do this. Why don't you, the platform, do it for us? Uh, and so there's places where we cap the number of nights uh, a host can actually host um, in order to address concerns. So we've tried a lot of different things, and we bring that full toolbox uh, with us wherever we go. Obviously, you've been learning as Airbnb has been developing with these issues as well. Do you have an ideal model now that you go into a city with and say, well, you know, we know that the following things don't work. We know that we should keep it to 90 or 120 nights a year. 
I think the important thing is to make sure that the ordinary person can still host uh, without having to jump through too many hurdles. Because you have to remember, the ordinary person, which is the vast majority of our hosts, so if you look at a typical European host on Airbnb, they're renting out 30 nights a year. They're making about 3,000 euro a year. Uh, so you know, modest but meaningful to them. And I think the trick is finding regulation that doesn't make that use case more difficult. Um, so if you're making uh, this kind of casual person jump through a lot of hoops, you get a business license or a registration uh, or, or you know, signed uh, memo from the landlord, you know, that's all friction. That's going to make it harder for people to, to participate. Uh, and I think, I think you want people participating because they're basically taking what is the most expensive asset in their life, which is their home or, or their rent, uh, and when they're not using it, whether they're on a business trip or a vacation, uh, being able to draw a supplemental income from that. And I think that's tremendously empowering, and we wouldn't want to lose that as uh, we pass new regulation. You mentioned the tax issues. It is one of the problems that Airbnb is having is making sure that the landlords declare, or for tax authorities rather, to make sure that landlords are declaring or hosts are declaring what they're earning from Airbnb. Are you involved in encouraging your, your users to do this, and how do you do it? So obviously every country has different rules about uh, income, income tax. Uh, what we have done in many places is send reminders um, and also made it easier for hosts to understand their earnings uh, at the end of the tax year. Uh, so they kind of are better prepared and, and, and better informed about their responsibilities. Um, so that's where we are uh, right now. The other part of this is the, the hotel tax, which is something we're in a position to automatically collect and remit uh, and have now implemented that in 400 different municipalities. Is that enough? Oh, well, we've made a statement that we're actually willing to bring it to any municipality that's willing to partner with us. So it's actually an open invitation uh, to the entire world. Uh, we've built the technical capability to do it, um, but it does require the municipality to actually give us permission to collect a tax on their behalf. The, we've had complaints, for example, from the French finance minister that Airbnb as a company isn't paying enough tax in France. How do you respond to that sort of criticism? Uh, my response is that we follow all the tax laws uh, <laughs> that are appropriate. And so I think there is a lot of debate about what are the appropriate tax laws, but whatever they are, we will comply. When you talk about the question of over-tourism, as you mentioned it there in Barcelona, uh, your study that you've published also is looking at the, the proportion of Airbnb users to tourism. That's right. So, I mean, it is important to put Airbnb in the perspective of the broader industry, which is to say that we're actually still a small piece of the industry. Uh, uh, in the major cities where about 7% um, of, of tourists are using Airbnb. And so there's 14 times as many tourists who are not Airbnb users. Uh, so when you think about you know, a crowded street or whatever, uh, you have to understand that those aren't all Airbnb customers. We didn't cause that crowd to manifest itself there. Uh, and furthermore, we're actually distributing the guests and, and travelers amongst um, a broader surface area, so leading to uh, avoidance of congestion. Uh, it's been an incredible 10 years for Airbnb, getting to that you know, 400 guests every two minutes is pretty impressive. Did you ever think when this started out that it would get this far? No, absolutely not. I mean, uh, you know, people always asked us in the early days, you know, how can you ever get strangers to trust one another, uh, allowing someone else to stay in your home? And, and that was the common wisdom. And I think it's such a milestone uh, to have gotten where we are in spite of the fact that uh, so many people uh, would cite that as, as an obvious reason why this would never work. Uh, so, you know, I'm very proud um, of, of that fact. Um, and I also think, you know, what I'm even more proud of is, you know, all the people who have met each other through Airbnb and, and kind of the... the so you yourself are a host as well? I am a host, yeah. I have people staying in my home uh, every night, actually. And of course, when I travel, I'm always staying on Airbnb. So, uh, yes, I'm, I'm a top customer. Are people uh, surprised when they turn up and find that the, the man they're host, hosting them found the company? They are, absolutely, yeah. I, I do try to keep it low-key, so sometimes they don't find out. Um, do you have good ratings? I do. Very good. I'm a super <laughs> host, as we call it. Uh, so, yeah, we, 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 we've come a long ways. It's been 10 years now. Um, but I think you know, the, the most important impact um, beyond the financial is, is, is really um, you know, making this world a smaller place by uh, increasing kind of people-to-people -people, uh, interaction from different countries. And I think that's increasingly important uh, in the world today. What's going to be next for Airbnb? So we're now about much more than just uh, accommodations. Uh, we, about a year and a half ago, launched our experiences product. And so these are ordinary people taking something that they're passionate about or knowledgeable about, such as uh, you know, cooking or taking you shopping or dancing or whatnot, and turning these into um, experiences that, as a traveler new to Paris or to San Francisco, you can connect up with a local and, and, and do something that you both find fun. Uh, so this is 
uh, growing very quickly. Uh, we have about 20,000 experiences on the platform, uh, but it's growing quickly uh, and getting rave reviews. Um, you know, it's, it's just so kind of personal, uh, intimate, and interesting. Um, we're also um, finding other ways of uh, taking Airbnb into restaurant reservations and, and, and other kind of new ventures. So it's are an exciting you, time. It's also, you're also facing more competition. Other people are, are cottoning on to your idea and doing it. How do you deal with that? Well, I think uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. So uh, yes, uh, with our success, there's a lot of people who want to participate in that too. Um, I think we're pretty far out in front in terms of the innovation. Um, and so I'm not too concerned about it. Um, you know, I think our brand stands for something that's pretty distinct. And we're, we're pretty different than an OTA. OTA, uh, like Booking.com, is, is very transactional. And the brand doesn't um, have the same kind of brand promise that Airbnb has, which Airbnb is much more focused. And it's focused around uh, authentic travel experiences. Uh, that's what we stand for, and that's what we provide. And I, so I think all the newcomers to this space uh, are going to have a harder time delivering on that brand promise. Nathan Bacharzak, co-founder of Airbnb, thank you very much for speaking to us. Thanks for having me. That's all we have time for for this program. Do stay with us. Plenty more news coming up on France 24.